أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقد ربك أن لا تعبدوا إلا إياه وقد ربك أن لا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إن يبلغن عندك الكبر أهدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما عف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما أخفض لهما جناح الزم من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما رب يعني صغيرا ربكم أعلم بما في نفوسكم إن تكون صالحين فإنه كان للأوابين فإنه كان للأوابين غفورا وآت ذا القربى حقه والمسكين وابن السبيل ولا تبذر تبذيرا إن المبذرين كانوا إخوان الشياطين وكان الشيطان لربه كفورا صدق الله العظيم and your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him and that you be dutiful to your parents. If one of them or both of them attain old days in your life, say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at them but address them in terms of honor. And lower unto them the wing of submission and humility through mercy and say, My Lord, Bestow on them your mercy as they did bring me up when I was small. Your Lord knows best what is in your inner selves. If you are righteous, then verily he is ever most forgiving to those who turn unto him again and again in obedience and in repentance. You give to the kind that his due and to the miskin and to the wayfarer. But spend not wastefully your wealth in the manner of spendthrift. Verily, spendthrifts are brothers of shaitan, and the shaitan or the devil is ever ungrateful to his Lord. Almighty Allah has said the truth. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al Azim. Jazakallah khair, brother Abdul Rahman, for a beautiful, powerful word from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Um, obviously, sister section is obviously getting full. I'm expecting more sisters to join in. So, brothers, if you don't mind, it's all right. You can stay there, but just uh, you know, if you can move towards the right, uh, right from my end, but from your side is move towards the left. So, therefore, in case someone wants to sit here, they can also sit there when they come in. Um, 
Now I would request uh, Brother Dr. Rafiqul Islam, the Amir and the President of Islamic Practice in Dawa Circle to give his valuable speech or presentation. Dr. Mahmoud Rafiqul Islam, please come forward. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له من يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وسفيه وخليله ومن لا نبي بعده أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونبيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا من يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز واهتدى اما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته it gives me immense pleasure to welcome our distinguished guest Dr. Abdul Bari all the way from UK who was so generously given his time to join this gathering. I think his participation one of us. Alhamdulillah. Indeed, his presence will definitely give us enthusiasm to move forward. His talk will give us a more in the right track. May Allah give him barakah. Ameen Allah mutaqabbal. I am also expressing my sincere gratitude and welcome our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters community leaders, boys, girls and kids for this gathering, day-long parenting course. I believe this gathering is very noble and a special gathering and indeed it is itself a symbol of wonderful diversity that characterized unity of Ummah as well as symbol of multiculturalism. <clears throat> Your kind presence, interest and support gives added meaning of our bonding. As decisive objective, who is to pleasure to our maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are following the same ideology, the ideology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We hear a great deal these days about the words convergence and connectivity. There are two words. In my judgment, I think all of you have the same, same judgment, that this country is a place where those words truly come to life. And this country has become a very embodiment of the global village, placing itself at the forefront of an enormous surge towards global convergence. It is understood that human diversity is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some say that pluralism is the threat, but we believe it is a blessing. We have learned from our scholars a powerful example of how the principles of our Islamic faith can be taken into the world through his affirmation of a pillar of Islamic values in the spirit of generosity towards others. My respected brothers and sisters, in this special place and this special time, once again, we, Islamic practice and Dawa circle, very much honored and privileged today to share our organization, our work, our activities, to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, let me give brief introduction of the IPDC. We as a Muslim, one of our prime day duties to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and convey the message to real Islam to wider community. 
To perform these obligations, we need a collective effort in an organizational framework. The aim of the IPDC is the common aim of every Muslims, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The IPDC was established to achieve this goal. Our objectives, our actions, our programs, one only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as per his guidance. Inna salati wa nusuki ya mahiya ya wa mati lillahi rabbil alameen. May worship, may sacrifice, my living, dying for the Allah, Lord of the worlds. And also the objective is to follow the Islam in all of our sphere of life. To do this, IPDC has given four main agenda to their members. First and foremost is Dawa, to propagate the true message of Islam in wider community. The practice what we advocate or proclaim. This is very important and we try to follow this one sincerely within our organization. Third is the organization and education, learning. Finally, the social welfare and community service. We are committed to this responsibility for our fellow friends, neighbors, and greater community. In IPDC, we have five different sub organizations. We have our women's wings, we have our young Muslim sisters, brothers, YMB, YMSA, and children's wings, LM, little Muslim wing. They all help to do their part in creating a strong nation. And we operate, our organizations operate Australia wide. We have the ASIC license, we have the SCLC license, we have the permission, we follow, try to follow the rules of the land accordingly. And we have active organization. In this particular slide, brothers and sisters, you can see there are green colors. All well, the green colors means all the active state of IPDC. You will see there are some stars. These stars indicate the active center working. In New South Wales, there are two centers, St. Mary's and Lakemba is new center. In Victoria, Perth, ACT and also Queensland, Tasmania and Northern Territory, we are trying to trying to establish our organization. Inshallah. We are seeking the Rahmah and Barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have some in this particular slides, some centers. The top slides is the Brisbane Center, last ASEAN held in Brisbane, the Lakemba Slack Creek Centers. And the chief guest was the Cameron Deeg, the health minister. And the following figure, you can see the opening session of that center. And last year, you can remember, this, uh, this hall particular, we had a prophetic leadership gathering, alhamdulillah. And this year, we are going to day long course, parenting. And there are some other activities, what we are doing as IPDC. And in the top figure, you will see this one of the sheikhs giving lecture. It looks like a sheikh, but his name is Andrew, Muhammad Andrew. He is a Ibad Muslim, Alhamdulillah. He became the Muslim and he is learning us. This is one of the lessons. He is teaching us, Alhamdulillah. And there are some social welfare activities. And therapy activities, social welfare activities, all are there. So due to the time limitation, I cannot explain more. So, this is my dear respect of other sisters. So one of the questions, it comes in my mind and all, come, all of you have the same questions I believe. How do human beings live together on a single planet, on this planet, with so many different moral systems, ideologies and religions? What does Islam say about dealing with your fellow human being? Muslims and non-Muslims. Is Islam's or religions creates any artificial barriers between people? This is the question. Family, my respect and brother, sister, this to, today, this event is very important for all of us because 
we know the family is the nucleus of the society. And we parents, we parents, brothers and sisters, we can play a key role in order to, in order for the people to live peacefully together on this planet. They must have be willing to deal respectfully to our next generation, to our youths, to our children, kids. Because kids are the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the current world is facing a lot of challenges. We live in this world in the age of tremendous uphill and uncertainty. People everywhere are grouping anxiously for something that can save humanity, which has lost its, lost its way and is on the brink of unprecedented disaster. We can overcome this challenge, inshallah, if we first rectify ourselves. We have remember, and I believe all of you have heard this is the first one of the strong messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah al rad Allah Almighty says, He will not change the nation. He will not change the people. He says, He will not change the society. He will not change the environment. He will not change the world until we change, we rectify ourselves. My dear respected brothers, sisters, how can we become transforming community by building a wider sense of the understanding of the world? We, not I. By the understanding the word, we, not I. My dear respected brothers, sisters, how can we build strong and sustainable relationships within wider communities so that we can fulfill all crises and address the challenges together. How can we transform our communities through wise use of spiritual as well as religious resources? My dear respected brothers and sisters, good and peaceful relationships within our own communities. Many conflicts in our world today are related to religious identities. Even if these conflicts have primarily political, economic or cultural reasons, but one of the main conflicts within our society, within our family, my respected brothers and sisters, our world, this world, this country, this place where we are living, we need to think about it. Let's come together, make a strong bond within ourselves. Join our hands and work together like Bunyan and Masus. I would like to request all our fellow respected brothers, sisters, boys, girls, kids. This is my humble request. Please support the objectives, vision to become a good Muslim, to prepare our youths as a good Muslim Australian citizen. Australia is a beautiful country and a land of multiculturalism and lots of different faiths. Let us make bonding together with our communities and faiths and build a society with peace, harmony, social cohesion for better living for current and future generations. In conclusion, we hope this distinguished gathering will find effective way of bringing points to view closer in the relation between our bonding to make a good and peaceful society. I have no doubt in my mind that all of us will be benefited from this gathering as a parents. And we are very blessed that Dr. Abdul Bari, he is generously given his time, he will be conducting this session. Alhamdulillah. I believe this session will is very important for all of us as parents. I once thank all of you for coming and gathering this special moment. Let me allow to call upon Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us our steps in the service of Ummah and his progress. May he uphold Muslim community of this country as well as in this Australia security, dignity under you, me, your wise.
Stay forward thinking and relationship. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much, Dr. Rafiqul Islam, for his uh, powerful presentation. Indeed, uh, we are living in Australia, and obviously we plan to come here. We're going to be living here, inshallah. And obviously our next generation also will be, you know, living in this country. So therefore, uh, we like to make everything what we believe, and we try to promote, as he mentioned, our culture to the wider Australian communities. Uh, before I proceed, I'd just like to mention that uh, the one of the organization has kindly you know, agreed to sponsor this program, part of this, part of the cost towards this program, which is MCC, as you can see the banner standing there, uh, which is a Muslim uh, Community Islamic Finance Organization. So there's uh, some flyers and uh, business cards are also outside the door. If you feel free, if you want to take something, take it with you. This is all free for you. Uh, before we move into the next program, which is uh, our most uh, uh, important uh, presentation of this you know, of this program and uh, this is what we are waiting for and we have been uh, trying to organize this for the last uh, couple of months uh, which is our uh, brother all the way from England Dr. Mohammed Abdul Bari um, I thought that at this point in time he probably should have been in England rather than here because English politics in turmoil at this point in time Maybe David Cameron probably needs his assistance as well. I don't know whether you're associated to him or not, but he seemed to be, uh, you know, well connected with the politics and many other, uh, you know, bureaucratic and other kind of uh, institutions or organization in Britain. So therefore, I thought that maybe it's a good, uh, you know, point to note. Maybe you know he needs a call from you or something like that. Khair <laughs> inshallah. All right. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Brother Abdul Bari because uh, he's a you know, well prominent uh, Muslim figure in the Western uh, world, particularly in Britain and uh, Europe. Uh, just to uh, briefly uh, say a few words about him, he's, uh, he was born in Bangladesh, of course, and uh, he's MBA, FRS, and Bangladesh uh, born British physicist, scholar, writer, teacher, community leader, and current secretary of Muslim aid. Um, so, obviously, you can search more about him in, in uh, internet. In Google, you can type his name, Dr. Abdubai, it will appear you know, automatically. And uh, also, you can see his uh, credentials uh, in Wikipedia. So, Dr. Bari has kindly agreed to visit uh, Australia. I think I'm not sure for the first time or uh, he visited before, but regardless, he's uh, spending his time, very valuable time with us. And uh, he has been actually extremely busy for the last uh, few days. Tirelessly, he is attending a number of programs around uh, this country. I think he was in Melbourne before he came here. Uh, last couple of days, he was also very, very busy, uh, you know, attending various programs. So, Dr. Abdul Bari, uh, he will be presenting about the today's parenting course, uh, which is one of his uh, main focus, and also he's very uh, specialist on this in this area. It requires at least a couple of days this kind of workshop. But because of the time constraint, he won't be able to, or we won't be able to continue for two days. So it will be pretty much a squeezed and concise version of this uh, parenting course. So I request all of your attention to the best of your ability. Uh, I know that you have got children here. If uh, if there is any issue with uh, you know controlling them or they are annoying, uh, we have brothers outside. They will be looking after your children on your behalf. And I request all the sisters to be sitting on that side, and also have maybe half of it. Uh, if sisters are sister coming, the brothers can push on the other side. So if sisters are requested to sit all around this area, please. And so the brothers can also sit around this area. And Dr. Barry can also focus uh, or have an eye, eye contact to all of you, so that he can actually concentrate on his presentation. Um, and also, uh, our program will continue from here until uh, 11 o'clock. We'll have a short uh, break. Uh, for about 15 minutes. So if you need to do something, you can just go out. You know, if you want to refresh yourself, maybe buy a cup of coffee or, you know, use the other facilities here. And then we'll continue then after un until uh, 12.30. Then we'll have a break, uh, which is for Salaf Dohar. 
and, uh, uh, and the lunch break. So now I request Dr. Abdelbari to hand you over the rest of the program. IPDC and other brothers and sisters. Uh, first of all, I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has enabled us to be here. And this is the first time, in, my first time in Australia. And uh, you are right, I have been busy, but I have been learning many things and uh, about Australia, about Muslims in this area, in this part of the world. <coughs> and also talking with many people, alhamdulillah. About, I will straight away go into the discussion about this session. I normally, I normally have conversation with people. So my apology to organizers, I didn't clarify that sitting arrangement, this is a lecture, lecture sitting. And I normally do not give lectures. And I will tell, I will tell you why. Uh, lecture is important, those who are good lecturers, or good orators, and that stays for a while, but conversation stays for a long time. So normally this course is 15 hours, 6 days course, 2 and a half hours. There are initial discussion, then there are homeworks, and people come and discuss, so that settles in people's minds, so it is a course. So I try to concise this in one day, but given the arrangement, it is really, I, I, I really find, find this daunting as to how I will manage, because you can, you can see this is interactive course. Interactive means it's uh, communication with one another, with each other. So now this communication will be between you and me. It's not going to be between you and you. So that's the difficulty, but okay, here is here we are. Let's try to make most out of this. So, as part of interactiveness, I will ask you a few questions for me to figure out who you are. Uh, is it okay? And I will not be f a, like a formal lecture. I will probably give some story. I'll, it, it's just, it's just, I'll try to make it as conversational as possible. Uh, that's my style. And that works better in these sort of things. So, sorry for this arrangement. But let's see how it goes. First of all, I want to know uh, from amongst you, is there anyone who doesn't understand English, uh, sorry, the different way? Uh, well, I might, if most of the people are Bengali, say, then there are some, there are some Bengali, um, Bengali things you need. it. I, I bring it deliberately. But I just want to know, is all of you from the Bangladeshi origin, or is there anyone who is not Bangladeshi origin, or who doesn't understand Bengali at all? Well, a few. You don't understand Bengali at all. That's fine. And advocates, definitely. <clears throat> Second thing is, um, how many of you have children who are post puberty means post adolescence that means beyond 14, 13, 14, 15? How many parents have children who, whose age are beyond 14 or 15? Quite a few. Okay. How many are you in this country who are very new, means just one year? Okay. More than 10 years? How many of you are, were here for more than 10 years? Okay. Okay. And, um, then, how many of you did I mean, attend any lecture or course on parenting? Okay. It's a, I know it's, a, it's boring, I know. How many of you have read any parenting book in Bengali and English? 
Okay, the Rakum Laka, that that gives some idea, inshallah. Okay. <clears throat> I want to ask you very another simple, straight question. How many of you are um, feeling excited this morning? Raise hand. Feeling excited. Okay. Feeling tired. Very few. I want to be honest. That's important. And um, I think I, I will end, end, end here and see what I can do. So it's a, as I mentioned, 15 hours course. There are five components of the course. And it's about practical discussion of how as parents in the West, as Brother Rafikul Islam has mentioned, rightly mentioned, we are in a pluralist society. Pluralist means there are many human flowers in this garden. I use this metaphor like a multicolored flower garden. Human beings are multicolored flower, flowers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this wa ja'alnakum shu'uba wa kabayla li ta'arafu so that we know one another. We know one another, we recognize one another, we acknowledge, respect one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created us as one monolithic, one colored flower. Not every human being is black or white or brown. Within our small, tiny space, phase, there are seven billion human beings. We can differentiate. Even between brothers and sisters, probably outsiders will not recognize the difference, but mom and dad will recognize, and there is a difference of DNA. Even in these tiny fingertips, every human being is different. The reason I'm mentioning this is human being is unique. And this uniqueness is their difference and diversity. Diversity is the essence of human being. And if there is no diversity, everybody will be cloned to each other. There is no, there is no joy, there is no adventure in life if everybody is cloned to each other. If everybody talks in the same way, everybody smiles in the same way, there is no joy in it. So recognition is everybody is going to be different. Is it okay? Because everybody is different and diverse, so there are challenges come. How do we live with this diversity? And this diversity in a monolithic country like Bangladesh is not that much. Even then people are fighting for, they have created, Bangladeshi people and other people have created their own diversity. In fact, differences. There is no ethnic diversity, but they have, we have to fight for political reasons. In the West, there are, in London, where I live, 300 languages are spoken in this, in this city. 300 languages. People don't fight unnecessarily. There are a small criminality, that's another thing. So, in our family, there is a husband, there is a wife, there is mother and father, there are grandfathers, there are other members in the family. All of them have to be different in that, from that perspective. When we have children, they will be different. One will be a bit smiley, another will be a bit moony, one will be happy, another this is the nature. I've got four children, alhamdulillah. I'll try to tell my story and other stories as well. My youngest one clings to me like this, like a Velcro. You know Velcro? Velcro is something that sticks. You know, the shoes and others are, can, be, can be stuck with a button. It sticks together. Velcro. Many children are like Velcro with their moms and dad. That means they cling, they hug. There are such children who don't like this. My second son, who is a doctor now, if I touch him, he has changed now, he will feel that something happened. He will, he will give him away from, from physical touch. So it's not only that physical side, emotional, intellectual, everybody is different. Some, wants to, some are good mathematicians, some are, some are not good at all good in mathematics, so in the same family. And that's why some parents try to compare one child with another child. And if someone is good in mathematics, then other, other child is not, then mother or father complains that my child is not like him. I'll discuss this in the, in the course that there shouldn't be any comparison between two children of your own because two are different. That's one aspect. Second aspect is most of us, all of us are coming from uh, developing countries. Australia is a developed country, Europe, Australia, America, but most of us are from Bangladesh and it's a developing 
or in the past it was used to be called third world countries. I don't, I don't like this word third world, but developing countries where rural background people are probably more than the city background people, city dwellers. In the rural culture, there are some unique advantages, there are some unique disadvantages. The advantage is when a child is born, the child is, being, is looked after by not only mom and dad, da 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 di, na 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 ni, not only them, village uncle, village auntie, village mama, this sort of, everybody looks after the child. So that is sort of called community parenting. If mom and dad lacks parenting skills, others fill that up. So there is no vacuum in that sense. So that is the benefit. And if a child becomes naughty and plucks up somebody's mangoes or breaks something, an uncle will come and will hold the ear or help the hand and say, why are you doing this? They feel responsible in a village, in a rural environment. And that's natural. Okay? I was a village boy. I was treated nicely. I was all sorts of things probably you would be aware. But the bad thing is, it is so open to everybody. There is no privacy. There is no privacy, there is, everybody knows each other and if something happens in some area, everybody starts spreading the rumor. That is the wrong side. So there are positive things, there are negative signs, neg negative things. In the Western developed post-modern society, the secular modern society, things are totally different. Everybody is individual, like a pillar. Everybody feels me first, not we. So this individualism is modern materialist society's killer disease, in my opinion. Because everybody thinks individually. It's me, it's me, it's me. That brings selfishness. That brings extreme capitalism. And that's why there are lots of charities and others to compensate this situation. So we are living in a society, Australia, Europe, America, where parenting job is isn't going to be shared by, <clears throat> unless you have extended family in here, I don't know how many. How many of you have got extended family in here? Can I see the hands again? Extended family? Okay, unless you are, if you, unless you are lucky of having extended family, you have to raise your child <clears throat> on your own, mom and dad. Now, here comes the great task. So because it's not shared by many other people, village people, uncle and other people, you two, mom and dad, are fully responsible. And in that, if mom, say, is ill, or dad is too busy, parenting task by one parent, if it is halved or reduced, there is a problem. Because it's not humanly possible to raise a child just on one's own, easily. It's not impossible, but it's really, really tough. Especially in a situation where the children can go astray easily. If dad abdicates their responsibility, busy outside job, community work, this and that, extra income, and mom stays at home with child, child or children, postnatal depression of the mom, and pressure at home, household work, everything has to do, it's impossible for mom, and it's a total injustice for moms to do this alone. So that's why one parent families in the West suffer. Children grow with not balanced views. And they see all the wrong pictures in the society, and when they grow, children grow, Many of them become behavior difficulty children. That's what I did in my job for 15 years. I was a physicist, I left physics, I became a science teacher, and then I took up the job of special needs education on my own with behavior, children with behavior difficulties. And it was part of my job that was, that was a blessing for me that I learned so many things in my life. Apart from my teaching of those children, more than teaching, you, you manage their behavior, that's it. But many of them have been so talented. So I, on my own, I visited their houses. 
Some of them were Bengalis, some of them were Somalis, and other communities. And I wanted to find the root cause of their behavior problem. Some of them in their 15 and 16 were entering the world of, entering into the world of drugs, part of the gang, fighting another gang in Tawahimers, in Bengali community. So why do they fight? Why do they join these gangs? Why are they attracted to the drugs? So the main or one of the main reasons was because in the family, father's role was nominal. Fathers were busy earning money, these are all sorts of things. And, of, and the other, other aspect was, both father and mother, because they came from rural background in Bangladesh, they, don't have, they didn't have any clue of the education system of, of Britain. When the children grow up, they don't know how to relate with their own children, because adolescence is a totally different world. Children become free, they go to schools, secondary or high schools or colleges, they do all sorts of things in their life because they have plenty of friends, a smartphone nowadays, internet, all sorts of world. And the, in the secondary school, uh, lots of boys and girls, totally different world. Moms and don't, dads don't have any clothes. So they, they live under the same roof, but they live in the two different worlds. That was, that was one of the main reasons for children to become difficult in their behavior. And some end up in drugs, some end up in criminality, end up in prisons. So I'm giving the extreme examples because if father and mother in a developed society, individualist society, do not share their parental responsibility, do not plan how they would raise their children collectively in consultation with each other, then there is probability, more probability that children will grow with distorted view of the world and they may end up in many other bad things. And I hope this doesn't happen to Australian, Bangladeshi and Muslims. But I am, I am aware that Lebanese, Turkish and others are following the path that, that French Muslims and British Muslim young children are doing. Okay, so what I'm saying, we live in a different society as Dr. Rafiq Islam has mentioned, materialist, cosmopolitan, developed, individualist, secular, agnostic, all sorts of society. Our mental framework has to be different from what we were in Bangladesh. I'm not saying you change your food, food culture and others, but you thinking our thing has to be different. Because we live in this society now. How our parents parented us, or how we behaved in the, in the past, what we did in Bangladesh, you can see this through a mirror, but don't just deliver, spend your time on that. We are present in this society, and how we move, that is, that's the most important thing. Okay, so with this few background uh, words, let me see, oh, it's the other way around. Or? I need probably help for someone. In fact, if someone comes and helps me, that will be easier probably. I don't, I don't want to be distracted by technical aspects. Which one? one? Yeah, I did that, but somehow did not. Maybe press this one. Okay. Okay. Very briefly, I'll, I'll just take you through some of the slides, then I'll, I'll pause, I'll discuss. But as I said, it's not going to be a totally interactive, and, uh, and normally we talk, somebody asks questions, somebody challenges me, everything is possible in a course. But uh, I cannot pretend that this is a course. This is just a sort of lecture with a bit of conversation. So very briefly, uh, when we deal with our children, we deal with ourselves because we were children once and we have the similar, fe similar features, similar hopes, aspirations and fears and everything. Only difference is we are elder and they are not elder. So a human being has got four elements in our life. One is 
One is the physical aspect or biological aspect. Second one is the emotional. That means it's related with heart, our fear, our love, our envy, our, our happiness. This comes not from the brain, this comes from the heart. And the other one is the uh, mental and intellectual. We think and we try to, uh, we try to think, we think and we bring something from our brain. That's creativity, mental and intellectual creativity. And obviously we have the religious and the spiritual. No matter whether, whether the person is religious or Muslim or not, everybody has got some sort of religious or spiritual ethos. Even the atheists, they believe in something. So religious or belief issue. So all these aspects are there with me, with you, with adult, with children. So we have to look after all these aspects when we try to develop them, make them progress. Every, every aspect has to be kept in mind. If you only look after the physical side, do not look after the other side. A child is healthy, but doesn't know how to talk with the others. A child is healthy or emotionally okay, but doesn't know how to think. And if any problem comes fearful and okay, it doesn't work. So we have to be a balanced human being. And even within the food, there is a balanced diet. I, I hope Australian people would be knowing this. Don't eat only meat, you have to eat fruits, vegetables, all the vit vitamins and other things. So whole life has to be full of balance. So this aspect, if we keep this in mind, then this is one of the comparisons I always give. Because a child is born as a totally dependent, vulnerable, like a plant. That's why, you know, there are two words, the same word in, in, in English, nursery of children, nursery of plants. There is similarity. So in the nursery phase of our children, it's a nursing phase from birth to say around three, uh, two and a half years, and Islam is two years winning period. So this is the period where things are really, really vulnerable. As if the plant is coming and tiny wind and tiny storm or probably a bit of more water will destroy the plant. So a plant needs certain elements, human beings need certain elements. It's just a comparison of the vulnerability. And once a, once a child becomes an adolescent or adult, like a tree, once a t tree becomes a tree, then it can protect itself from all sorts of things, apart from tornadoes, tsunami, and other things. It, it can survive. But in the beginning phase, it's the survival, it's the safety, it's the love, it's the care, it's the affection, nothing else. Do not try to impose your will and knowledge or Quran and anything for a child who doesn't understand. And there is a there is an Islamic teaching that for the for for until the age of seven, do not impose anything. Give them freedom, love, and let them learn to play or game. Okay? This is an element where many Muslims probably would not agree in reality. I know this. We want our child to become a Hafiz. We want our child to learn Arabic, Bengali, everything with his tiny brain. And we don't realize that that is affecting them. Initially, they may out of pressure do something, but they will grow, their brain will grow as probably rebellious, or um, at the end of the day, they will not be su successful. There will be always exceptions. So I'm sure many of us want our children to memorize Quran and and that's fine, but do not impose them. Let them love it, let them try on their own, they'll learn it. If you impose anything, it backfires. That's what the ch children's psychology and even Islam says. Family, that is the foundation, as uh, Dr. Wilson has mentioned, is the foundation of human society, it's the nucleus of nucleus in an atom. A family gone is from a society, is society is gone. So, that modern family has changed. Okay? Extended family, nuclear family, blended or step family, now same-sex family. So, society is changing. Nobody knows where the Western society civilization will end up, but that's another discussion. But a, a, a human, a nation which loses its family, loses everything. And I don't have enough time to discuss about all these types of families. So, what we need is a happy, secured, loving and caring family. If we don't have this, 
then we will have this superficial means artificial broken family mom is there somewhere dad is not there it says a broken dysfunctional it doesn't function as a family everybody goes in, in his or her own way mom doesn't have any authority on the, on the children dad doesn't have an authority on mom and vice versa and a neglectful family mom and dad are very busy with many things children are neglected did anybody read the novel Matilda or watch the film Matilda? Some of you, those who know, they, they will know. Matilda's mom and dad were like that. And Matilda became a wizard. That means magician. That's fiction, okay? So if parents become like Matilda, do not care about their children. And I'm sure nobody is here in, is neglectful parents. But that, there are people who are neglectful. And then they will need positive family. And so, given this background, the course that I, I devised 10, 12 years ago, and I've been running course, courses, another person's course, 39, 39 hours course in my job as a teacher. So I devised my own course because I brought some Islamic element, and things are changing continuously. Um, governments radicalization prevent everything I have brought in because this is a need now and <clears throat> these are the five five elements or components it's, they are all in your, in, your, in your folder I'm just going to go through this so that you need a bit of background of this the first one is the balanced growth and development that is the essential bit okay we need our strong fit body as human beings to survive that's the essence. A tree needs a trunk, and the branches are additional. Okay, there are many trees that doesn't that that don't have any branches. I just uh, <coughs> visited uh, one of the botanical gardens, 200 years old in here. I really like some of the gardens, some of the plants that has got different roots, very different roots, trunks different, branch different. So, what we need is the body that has Allah SWT has given us that had to, had, has to be kept, kept fit. Without a fit body, the brain doesn't work, emotion doesn't work, spirituality doesn't come even. So that's the essence, is the, is the, is the base of a pyramid. If there is no base, there is no peak of the pyramid, okay? Any thinking, good thinking, good emotion, love, humanity, anything that is based in this, in this body, so this body has to be kept fit. The Western society knows how to keep their body fit. Because they have got gymnasium, their eating habit is different, they eat good food, of course uh, they eat <coughs> all sorts of um, wine and other things, that's another thing. And Western society is realizing that um, drinking is one of the curse in this society. So at least they know through their exercises, regular habit of life to maintain their body. They know another thing, and that's why for these two things they are now successful. One is the physical fitness, other one is intellectual fitness, as I mentioned in the previous slide. So physical and intellectual fitness, these two things have given them um, edge in scientific technological development. They have ruled the world for the last 300, 500 years. And the Eastern countries mostly, our physical physical fitness side is very very weak especially our, our community our food is not he that healthy the spice also the junk foods asian junk i call them there are western junk foods there are asian junk foods also some spices and um, unhealthy food we eat with our full belly and uh, within, within within half an hour one hour we go to bed at night I'm, I'm talking from my experience of my community in, in, in Britain. So, when I say balanced growth and development, it's the four elements, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual side. That is uncompromising. Our children's health, their safety, their cleanliness, and when they grow, the, using their brain, and love and care, all sorts of education, teaching is important. That's the essence, that's the basic. Second aspect is relationship. I'll, disp I'll go through all of this, inshallah. And that relationship is 
such that human relationship is, relationship is very fragile. Okay? Fragile in the sense one single word can hurt the relationship, can destroy a relationship. You know, Allah SWT has given us tongue and body language. Sheikh Sadi Rahmanullah has said there are there is an organ in as there is an organ in the human body, softest but hardest. So tongue is the softest organ in our body, but this can destroy relationship. This can bring relationship. Love comes out from our our spoken word, and somebody can destroy the family relation by abusive word or shouting and all sorts of things. This tongue can be used for good thing. Tongue can be used for the bad thing. Okay. So this relationship is not only about tongue, it's about overall attitude towards our children. They are our, children are our flesh and blood. And that flesh and blood, they are little angels, okay? Allah SWT has created in the children the magnetic attraction. The way they talk, the way they smile, the way they, is unbelievably magnetic, un, uncomparable, this, this children, attraction towards children. But this child will one day grow up and some of them can grow up as monster like Hitler and Stalin. Okay? They were children, they were children before, okay, in their childhood. But they became monster at some stage. And others will become like Abu Bakr and all the good human beings on earth. So his parents, his mom and dad, and later on additionally with the society community, but fundamentally it's mom and dad that create monster or that create angel type human beings. So it starts from the day one. In fact, before day one. When I say before day one is, in fact, before marriage. Because a good Muslim man and man will find a good Muslim woman. That's the, that's the, that's the essence. And when a child, when a baby is in a mother's tummy, the mother's thinking, mother's good eating habit, mother's attitude, everything impacts the t baby in the womb. And towards the end, six, seven, eight months of pregnancy, mothers can communicate with the baby in the tummy. Can res baby responds. This is scientifically proven even. So if the mother recites Quran, the child will have subconsciously consumed the Quranic things. Then a child is born, we give them sweet, we give them a karma, and um, all sorts of things. Gradually a child, tiny eyes, see the mom and, mom and dad are praying, are doing this thing, or mom and dad are fighting against each other. Everything impinges on their brain. Okay? Because this brain, brain is like a sponge, and it sucks all the informations around. They are new to the world. And the information that comes, you know, those who are computer science students, they know the old, inf if the information around the child is fighting, drugs, drinking at home, the child will just see, observe, without any understanding, subconsciously that will be embedded in their brain. But if the child is see sees that mom and dad praying, good behavior, loving, caring, the brain will pick up, the child's brain will pick up, and gradually they will grow like that. But, but that's the intangible gift, gift to the child. Then formally we have to give them education, advice, and also so that's another thing. So balanced growth and development means physical, mental, emotional, spiritual guidance of children from the day one. And then, sorry, pa pa parent-child relationship. Relationship is, this relationship with a tiny little child may not remain as, as such. Child will grow. Child will pick up abusive words, child will pick up lots of things, and once a child will go at adolescence, the physical change come, girls' body changes, boys' body changes, attraction comes in, and all sorts of temptation in the world, and, um, and the children normally want um, justice in this world. When they say injustice, they want to fight against it, and uh, if they don't know how to fight, they will go to, they will go to Syria and fight, fight and die. If they know how to deal, deal things, they will become matured, adult, and will try to change the society in the positive, civilized, Islamic way. So all these pathways of human life is 
emerges from, from at home. Everything, the available everything is at home. That's why home is a school, is a nursery, is a school, and a human university. Mom and dad are the teachers. So mom and dad are just not mom and dad. They are the teachers of humanity. They are the leaders of humanity. And if this relationship is continuing, then even after the child becomes adolescent, want to get married, they, they will consult with their mom and dad, want to find a job, they will consult with their mom and dad. Mom and dad will also feel comfortable in advising them, guiding them, discussing them. That will be one unit of unit, unit of family where everybody loves each other, everybody consults one another, and that is the ideal good family. And if this is missing, everybody will go in, in his or her own way. Positive discipline is another way, it's related with this relationship. Once the child grows, they will not remain angel. angel. Angelic period is before puberty, okay? And when someone dies before puberty, Allah SWT will not ask anything. But after puberty, that's the, that's the challenging period of human life comes. And Allah SWT has given us two things. Allah SWT has given us sense of conscience, or taqwa, or love, love or fear of Allah in our heart. At the same time, He has given us the ability to do all sorts of evil things. So this is a gift from Allah SWT to test us. If, if there is no gift of fuzur or evil things, if we are programmed as good, him, good, good people, then we would have been angels. Allah SWT did not need any angels. He had already angels. So he created human beings with a test so that he knows who uses his taqwa and who uses his or her fuzur. That's where the whole the whole experiment of this life is we are being tested. Once we are born, we are being tested. Until the age of puberty, we are safe. After the age of puberty, it's a test. It's a massive test. And mom and dad are those teachers who prepare the future generation to pass in that test. Some can pass in the first degree, first class degree. Some can just pass. Some will be middle, some will probably fail. So I am giving, in my opinion, mom and dad are, uh, at least for their, for their children, that's why Allah SWT will ask them what, what you did. And in one way, one of the Quranic verses Allah SWT has, has said that those who would be thrown into the hell, they will say, oh Allah, before we go to hell, let us see our mom and dad and leaders of the society so that we can, we can step foot on them and um, we will go, we'll go to hell but we will first of all step on them and we will go to hell. And Allah SWT has mentioned that okay, um, they will get their, they will get their reward and punishment but you cannot, you cannot blame that because of only them you are, you are bad because you became bad on your own when you become adult. So this test is a serious test. As believers, we believe it. Non-Muslims and others do not believe, but even then, they are producing better children out of their sense of responsibility, national pride, creating civilization. But we have additional thing in the world as well as Akira. But sometimes, as Muslims, we have forgotten our role. So we need discipline, disciplining with our ch children, not punishing our child. Children. So there are a quite a few steps, and I'll go through, go through a few of them. Fourth one is family and community perspective. We cannot raise our children on our own in, in a society where everybody is dependent on each other. So in, in, I don't know about Australia, in, in, in England, in the poor housing areas, there are plenty of council houses, children from all communities, many of them are drug affected and they play around outside and if, if one of our ch children is to grow in the council area, poor areas, where there are other friends who are drug addicted, then there is a high probability that that child will, will be sucked into that, will, will be falling into the 
uh, all sorts of vice. And that is what is happening among some Bangladeshi, Pakistani, and for black people, it's worse. It's drug as well as gang, gang fight. There's gun crime in the black community in Britain. So they join the, join the gang, and joining gang has become, become part of youthfulness. So once joined, then there's internal strife, then gunfight, someone dies. All, always, in, in London is one of the safest, but even then every year, around 15 to 20 or sometimes 30 young black, some of them are Muslim young black, are killed because of the internal gang, gunfight, gunfight. What I'm saying, that you cannot simply raise your child in a silo, in a, in a small area, ghetto. You cannot simply compartmentalize your child's life. That you grow in my house and jump to the university or college, but there is a society, a community that a child is linked with. If we don't work with the community, neighborhood, Muslim and non-Muslim, then there is a danger. So that means we cannot be selfish parents. We have to help our neighbors. Okay? They may be non-Muslim, they may not be practicing Muslim, but I think everybody wants their children not to be involved in gunfight or gang or drugs or prostitution or anything. So we have friends, allies in the neighborhood. We have to use that. We have to be a, a good Muslim parent. We will be community oriented. We know neighbors. And Professor Islam has encouraged the neighborhood spirit. That's a very, very big discussion. That's, that will be coming as well. Faith and culture and spirituality. So we can only do this, we can only do this if parents understand the spirit of parenting in the spirit of Islam and Islamic faith and culture. That will become easier. A traditional Bangladeshi, Pakistani, Indian or any culture will not be able to help in this. Okay? Unless we infuse in the children the spirit of Islam, not only some rituals, namaz and a few rituals, they are rituals, they are between, a, between Allah and human beings. The spirit, the message, the akhlaq, muamalat, this aspect of Islam is important. If we can infuse in them, give in our children this faith, culture and spirituality, love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will become easier. So in a way, these five are interlinked. You know, when you, put, when you keep fast, and even those who doesn't pray, when they fast, they wouldn't eat anything, even when there is no one around them. Why would they do this? Because they know that Allah is watching. That is the essence of the spirituality. So if our children follow what we say, Islam and other things, because they know that Allah is watching, this love of Allah, fear of Allah is, can, can be given in them, then we can be confident that when they are alone on their own in the university or in the job, they will not miss prayer, they will not, they will not do things that is against Islam. But if children are only told, do this, don't do this, and children do this because of the fear or love of mom and dad, it's not going to, it's not going to work more. It's, it's, it's going to be go, gone away at some stage. So this is more or less the uh, five components, these areas have to be kept in mind when we raise, raise our children. And uh, depending on the children's age, their ability, family environment, we have to adopt this. There is no one way of parenting. It's not a mathematical science. Two plus two makes four. It's not like that. Any technique that works for you in your family in the long term, do adopt. We, we do not prescribe certain ways. We show that there are different ways. Adopt according to your own situation, family situation, your own children's ability. You know them better. So it's not a prescription. Parenting is, for me at least, I don't prescribe people to do this, don't do this. It's just simple ways of alerting you making you aware that there are various ways of positive parenting. I call it a positive parenting. Proactive parenting. Always conscious, continuously being conscious that our child is growing and child needs direction. How we do this? 
once or twice reminder company love giving them environment giving them self space these are the things that you have to think on your own so i want thoughtful mom and dad not blindly following mom and dad thoughtful mom and dad will innovate will will, will find something on their own so these are the some of the areas that probably this the whole course not this lecture because this lecture is very short the whole course attempts to attain it's all sort of proactive proactive means you, you work on your own so so that nobody reminds you uh, effective and innovative parenting lifelong parenting it is lifelong because mom and dad are always mom and dad until they die and in history we have seen you have a slam advice your son smile a slam on one occasion to change his wife on another occasion to keep his wife is it as a father your advice they were both prophets probably we cannot say this like this but we can advise our children okay in islamic history moms do you the inspire the children to become um fighters of islam is unimaginable abdul abdul majwas mom mother was one of them in the indian indian history uh, muhammad ali shaukat ali's mom she was one of the greatest moms and she inspired her two children to 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 scholars to fight against the british imperialism so moms dads they can inspire even the children are great leaders in their time although they are very frail abdul ibn jubair's mother was 100 year old when he abdul ibn jubair was fighting against hajjaj ibn yusuf so these are history i don't have time to explain empower parents so you will get more confidence if you are knowledgeable if you are aware of your parenting responsibility and when your child grow in your lap and from the lap starts crawling from crawling to run and grow up as adult bigger than size bigger than your size my three boys are bigger than me but uh, i feel that they are there my baby and they feel that this is the relationship so that this relationship continues until mom and dad lives in this uh, from this world so that confidence is important as i mentioned mom and dad maybe mom and dad do not have confident in talking to their own children when they grow up and one point the relationship that will be specific to every every child uh, mom and dad individually has to have one to one relationship with individual child assertive discipline that means you are polite and firm you don't shout but what you say makes sense a child follows you it's like a good teacher and bad teacher i was a teacher science teacher i have an example one english teacher in his classroom every every time there was a shout he was my friend and his voice is every day every time he came in the morning and all the day he, he shouted towards the end he went home with croaky voice then i had another teacher head of the science department whenever he came to the in, into the door of this classroom and just look around everybody was quiet this is a discipline technique it depends on personality it depends on confidence it depends on how you present yourself so mom and dad doesn't have to shout at children the moment you start shout, shouting you lose your personality and i will mention some of the techniques that uh you, sh- you should do you shouldn't do so as such a discipline is that if we cultural and spiritual aspect this course is about keeping us mu- better muslims when i run this course with non muslims i give up i i i take care of the religious aspect but mu- main thing is same more or less connecting to the community it is important and i know you are connected to your own community but please i'll just allow to if your community is only okay so if your community is only people that you know this is not your community you have to expand your community you know five people of your own bengali bengali or from the same group of same thinking and i think that is okay that's fine so you should grow like that but if you don't expand your community then you are in solar you have to expand your community that's the nature of human beings 
Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم there is so much importance in neighborhood responsibility and sahaba ask all oh, prophet who are our neighbors Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said 40 houses on your right 40 houses on your left what does it mean the whole locality should be our neighbor neighbor or community but sometimes or most of the times we have seen muslims or bengali people like us cling to our people that we only know we convert to convert okay that's very it's a comfort zone we, we love to be comfort in, in comfort and sometimes if we, we, we probably fear talking with others but i think for muslims this is this is a one of the weakest points i have seen in, my, in our community so connecting with the community tension free and violence free family life through providing strategies and skills so some of the strategies and skills i'll be going to discuss inshallah i am reminded that is 11 o'clock so can we have 15 minutes break and um, you can have internal discussion within you within it uh, within yourselves and talk and you can probably in the first after 15 minutes i will probably take one or two questions on the basis of what i discussed in in the last one hour. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum.